A capacitor is essentially a device that is capable of storing electric charge. Now different types of capacitors exist. In this lecture we're going to focus on parallel plate capacitors that we introduced in the previous lecture. In fact, we're going to determine the capacitance of parallel plate capacitors. So let's begin by looking at the following parallel plate capacitor. So this consists of two parallel plates, plate 1 that has a negative charge and plate 2 that has the same quantity of positive charge. So our electric field lines begin on the positive plate and end on the negative plate and one such electric field line is shown by the following green vector. So recall that electric fields point in the same direction as the electric field lines. That will become important in just a moment. So this is plate number one and this is plate number two. The separation between them is given by lowercase d. So in this lecture we essentially want to explore the following question. What determines the capacitance of parallel plate capacitors. And let's begin by recalling the following two equations that we'll need to use in this lecture. So the quantity of charge Q that is stored on either one of these plates is equal to the product of the capacitance of these plates given by C and our voltage difference between our plates 1 and 2. This is given by the following relationship. Now in a previous lecture on electric fields we said that the electric fields between two parallel plates as shown is uniform, it's constant, and it's given by the following ratio of the charge density given by sigma divided by epsilon naught, our permittivity of free space constant. So constant divided by a constant gives us a uniform electric field. Now, by definition of charge density, we know that sigma is equal to Q divided by A, where Q is the quantity of charge that exists on a parallel plate divided by the surface area of that particular parallel plate. Now, because sigma is equal to Q divided by A, we can take equation 2 and plug in Q divided by A for our sigma and we see that the electric field between our two parallel plate capacitors is equal to Q, the quantity of charge that is stored on either one of these plates, divided by our epsilon not the permittivity of free space, multiplied by the surface area of either one of these two plates. Now the A of these two plates is assumed to be the same. So let's begin by recalling the relationship between voltage difference between the electric potential difference and the electric field. So previously we saw that the voltage difference between our plate 1 and plate 2 is equal to the negative of the integral of the dot product of our electric field and our infinitely small distance dl from plate 1 to plate 2. Now let's look at the following plate. So notice we're going to integrate beginning on plate number 1 and ending on plate number 2. So that basically means that our dl vector will point anti-parallel with respect to our electric field and that will become important in just a moment. Now, by definition of the dot product, the dot product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of the two vectors and the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Now notice our electric field vector points downward while our dl vector points upward. So that means the angle between them is 180 degrees. Now cosine of the angle 180 degrees is equal to negative 1. So that means the voltage difference between plate 1 and 2 beginning at plate 1 and ending at plate 2 is equal to the integral of E, the magnitude of E, multiplied by the magnitude of DL from plate 1 to plate 2. Now we can take this result 
the fact that the electric field is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught multiplied by A and plug that in for this electric field. And we get the following result. Now we take this and we take our constants outside of our integral. Now Q is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant, and the surface area of the plate is also a constant. So we take this ratio outside of our integral. We see that the voltage difference between plates 1 and 2 is equal to the constant Q divided by epsilon naught multiplied by A multiplied by the integral of DL from 1 to 2. So if we integrate this, if we integrate this, we get the following result. The voltage difference between plates 1 and 2 of our parallel plate capacitor is equal to Q multiplied by D divided by epsilon naught multiplied by A. So we see the following equation. Now, let's go back to equation number 1. Q is equal to CV. Because Q is equal to CV, we can replace this Q with the product C multiplied by V. We see the voltage is equal to C multiplied by V multiplied by D divided by epsilon naught multiplied by A. So notice V appears on the left and on the right side. We can cancel these V's out and rearrange and solve for the C. So we see that the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor is equal to the following equation. The capacitance is equal to epsilon naught multiplied by the surface area of one of those plates divided by the distance between these two plates. So notice that it depends on two things, the surface area as well as the distance separating our plates. So, what exactly is our conclusion? So, from this equation we see that as you increase the surface area of our parallel plate or as you decrease the distance between those plates, you will increase the capacitance. In other words, our capacitor will be able to store more charge on those plates. Now, notice the following important point. The capacitance does not depend on the voltage difference between those two plates and it does not depend on the quantity of charge that is stored on either one of those plates. So C does not depend on V and it does not depend on Q. It depends on the area and it depends on the distance between our two plates. So let's look at the following example that consists of three parts. We have part A, B, and C in which we're going to need to use these equations. So in part A, find the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor whose plates are 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters and which lie 0.002 meters apart. So our D is given to be 0.002 meters and our area is simply this multiplied by this. Now notice to use these quantities we have to first convert them into meters. So in part A we want to find the capacitance and by this equation the capacitance is equal to epsilon naught multiplied by A divided by D. So our A is 0.3 meters multiplied multiplied by 0.02 meters, that's the area of either one of these two plates. Now our E or epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, that's 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared divided by newtons per meter squared. And this is divided by our distance between our two plates, which is equal to 0.002 meters, and that gives us about 2.66 times 10 to the negative 11 farads, or simply F. Now let's move on to part B. Find the charge on each plate if they are connected to a battery that has a voltage difference of 12 volts. So once we connect that battery, the voltage difference between these two plates is equal to the voltage difference inside our battery. So it's equal to 10 volts. So we essentially want to use this equation. The amount of charge 
that either one of the plates can store is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage difference. The capacitance is simply 2.66 times 10 to the negative 11 farads, which was found in part A. And our voltage is given to be 10 volts. We multiply these quantities and we get 2.66 times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs is the quantity of charge that either one of these plates is capable of storing. And finally, let's move on to part C. In part C, we'd like to calculate the electric field between our plates. So the electric field remains constant and it's given by either this equation or this equation. So we're going to use this equation because we found the charge in part B and we know the area from the stem of the problem and we know this is simply a constant. So the electric field is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught multiplied by A. The Q is found in part B to be 2.66 times 10 to negative 10 coulombs divided by the permittivity of free space constant and multiplied by our area 0.3 multiplied by 0.02 meters squared and that gives us about 5,000 newtons per coulomb is our electric field between our two plates.